in that case, we can move on. And we are moving on to transformers because we know that in 2019, 2020, 2021, there is a trend trying to replace convolutional neural networks with attention mechanisms. So we had the same trend when it, when it was time for transformers to replace recurrent neural networks. We are asking the same question. Can you replace convolutional neural networks with transformers? We saw a couple of attempts at doing that when it came to classification. Let's see whether you can do the same thing with detection. We also saw some attempts at replacing CNNs with transformers when it came to uh, dense prediction tasks like semantic segmentation. But we are not letting go of CNNs altogether. There is going to be some CNN giving us at least reducing the resolution that we're going to work with and featureize it to some extent. And then we are going to put on top of a CNN, a transformer encoder decoder architecture, which is going to help us predict a set. So what we want to do, we want to reframe the object detection task as a set prediction task. And something like transformers are really good at that because they're going to take a set as input and they're going to output another set. But if you treat this problem as a set prediction task, then you're not going to know which box should you match with the corresponding ground truth. So which prediction in your set should correspond to which ground truth in your data for you to be able to train. So that's the only difficulty that you're going to have. So now you have a problem to solve. The architecture is straightforward. We are going to go through it. But the main part is writing down a good loss function for it. Now you want to write down a set prediction loss for your object detection. This architecture is going to output a fixed number of predictions. And let's say n is big enough so that it's going to detect uh, most of the objects or almost all of the objects in any image. So n should be big enough. And if n is big enough, in each image, there is only going to be a handful of objects. It means that you are being wasteful a little bit. So your neural network is going to predict n predictions, and n is usually much larger than the number of objects in any image. How do we deal with that? You're going to have this empty notation or the zero notation. It corresponds to no object. And whenever you have only two predictions, you're going to label the rest of them as empty or as no object. So you're always predicting more or you're always outputting more predictions than there is actually ground truth. So that's one solution to that problem, but you have more problems. The question is, what is the correct permutation? You're outputting n predictions, but what is the correct permutation so that it can match your predictions to the ground truth? Your neural network is predicting a box adjustment or a box coordinate, and it's going to output a probability, and it's going to output n of those. The question is, which one of these outputs are you going to correspond to your objects in the scene? And which ones are you going to correspond to the new object? Because later on, you want to do your training. So the question is, what is the correct permutation? And let's assume that your neural network, you know it, or it's in the middle of being trained. So you can fix the parameters, look at the predictions only, and then your question is, what is the correct permutation? How can I match the predictions to the outputs? You're going to write down an objective function. And for this objective function, you are not trying to minimize or optimize the parameters of your neural network. You are trying to find the correct permutation, which is a discrete task. You're not going to be able to do gradient descent or anything. And because it is discrete, you're going to do discrete optimization techniques. So this has nothing to do with deep learning. To find sigma, you're going to use Hungarian algorithm. But what is the last function that you're going to write to match the ground truth to the correct permutation? First of all, your ground truth for these boxes is going to have a corresponding class, and it's going to have four coordinates. CI could be empty, could be no, no object. And no object could include background or actually no objects, because here you are predicting more than necessary. So there's actually no such a thing. And then your BI are the box coordinates, which you normalize them according to the size of your image so that you're always between 0 and 1. And you're predicting the certain coordinates, the height and the width relative to the image size. Okay, so far so good. Now the question is, what is the corresponding probability 
for this particular class, for class CI, when you are using this permutation, when you're taking I and mapping it to another index. At the same time, you're gonna know the corresponding prediction of your model at that permutation. So rather than reading index I, you're gonna read index sigma I. So it's just a function from one index number to another index number. That's your permutation. And it's a discrete function. And you're trying to solve for that. The loss that you're gonna write is you're gonna try to maximize the probability of the correct class by adjusting your permutation. So you keep adjusting your permutation so that you're maximizing the, the likelihood or the probability of the correct class happening. And this, you only do it for objects that actually exist. You don't do it for no objects. And this negative sign is because we always like to minimize. We are trying to maximize this probability, but then you are minimizing this quantity. It's equivalent. And then you have a box loss, which is trying to match the intersection of a union. It's not only the intersection of a union or the L1 distance between the two. It's a weighted combination of the two of them. So you have some hyperparameters here to adjust. One of them is trying to, this uh, intersection over union, is trying to increase the intersection over union and at the same time trying to minimize whatever that's left over. So you're trying to have as much match as possible between the two. And it's not only a matter of intersection over union, it's also a matter of uh, reducing the, uh, the difference between the box that is containing the union of these two boxes. So it's just a set difference between the two. So you're trying to reduce the set difference between these two boxes, a box that is containing the union of those two. So if you look at this figure, not only you are trying to increase the intersection over union, but also you are trying to reduce these leftovers at the same time. So this second term is trying to do that. Okay, after solving this problem, so first of all, you fix the parameters of your neural network, you solve this problem. Now you're gonna know this prediction, the red one corresponds to this box. So you found the corresponding permutation. This other one corresponds to the other box. So you found the corresponding permutation. Now that you found the permutation, the rest of it is writing down your loss function and optimizing over the parameters of your neural network. How do you do that? It's the usual loss function that we are used to. Given the best sigma, given the best permutation, you know which box is gonna correspond to which product, which prediction. You try to maximize this probability or equivalently minimize the negative of the log of that probability and then trying to increase the match. There's a catch here. You're gonna have a lot of no object predictions. Your loss function is imbalanced. You have a lot of observations corresponding to no object because it is imbalanced. You are trying to mitigate that problem by uh, reducing the class imbalance when it comes to the no object class. So as soon as you know your sigma hat, the rest of them is a loss function that you're gonna write down and optimize with respect to the parameters of your neural network. So we wrote down the loss function here, but what is this transformer encoder decoder doing? The name of the architecture is DET detection transformer. You're gonna hear it a lot. First of all, how does it work? You're gonna take as input an image, which is this image here. That's three channels, red, green, blue. You push it through your CNN. You're gonna stop here. And that one is gonna have a size of a number of channels, which could be 2048. And you're reducing the resolution by 32 because the stride of this CNN, the total stride is 32. Then you take those feature maps, you push them through a one by one convolution, and then you're gonna end up with the features that you're gonna consume or your transformer is gonna consume. And this should be h divided by 32. This is h divided by 32. And d is smaller than c. We are trying to uh, condense these features before pushing them through transformers because transformers are expensive. Not only you are reducing the resolution, but also you are reducing the number of channels. And then you just reshape this. This is a 2D object. Whatever that's coming out of your CNN is a 2D object. You collapse the other two dimensions. You reshape it. And then this is gonna be the input to your transform. It's gonna be a sequence of d-dimensional vectors. So it's gonna be a sequence of d-dimensional vectors, but we know that transformers are gonna lose the ordering. At least when it comes to the input, the ordering matters. So you're gonna do positional encoding. 
this pixel is the first position. This other pixel is the second position. And then you take them and either use cosine and sine for your uh, features to increase the dimension, or you can have associated learnable vectors for each position. And then you just add them. And then these are gonna be the inputs to your transformer architecture. This is the encoder. You're gonna have a decoder that is gonna predict what objects are there. And then these object queries are like positional encodings. This is the first position, a vector corresponding to the first position, a vector corresponding to the second position. And then these are what, is, what are coming out of your neural network. This is the prediction corresponding to the first position. This is the prediction corresponding to the second position, etc. These go in, you're gonna take the output of your decoder, push them through fully or feed forward network. That's what FFN stands here for. Then you're gonna predict your class. You're gonna predict the corresponding box. And uh, as you can see, there is no need for non-maximum separation anymore because your neural network is allowed to output no objects. And whenever there is no object, there is no need to actually plot that. This is the architecture. That was the last function. This was trying to do the bipartite matching. As for another type of uh, application, you can do segmentation and actually panoptic segmentation, which is an extension of segmentation. So this is what you want to do. Not only you want to detect the objects, you want to detect the components of the background, like sky, uh, trees, etc. So the point here is that the same architecture you can apply to different tasks. For instance, here, this is, you have an image, you first detect the objects using these bounding box predictors. So basically you're taking your image, pushing it through your detection system that can detect the objects for you and also the background or stuff like sky trees. You take those embeddings, those vectors coming out of your transformers, these guys, you're gonna take them. You take your input image encoded using your CNN and then you pay attention. Every single pixel in the encoded image is going to pay attention to these outputs of your transformer. Now, because every pixel is going to pay attention to every single input here, and then you're going to have n, n corresponds to the number of outputs from your transformer decoder. You're going to end up, these are going to cancel because that's the one that is going to collapse. There's going to be a vague matrix vector multiplication there. These are the ones that you're going to pay attention you have these many pixels in the encoded image. You have these many inputs for your box embeddings. And then you have M attention heads, which are M copies of the same operations with different weights. You take those, push them through a ResNet architecture, and then you're going to predict a pixel-wise prediction. Is there a cow here? Yes or no. Is there a sky here? Yes or no. These are per pixel predictions. And then when it comes to the actual prediction of your model, at one point, there could be multiple objects that are being predicted, you just pick the pixel-wise maximum or the arc, arc max for the corresponding class. Any questions about that? There is a question about the IOU loss. Should it be the smallest box containing the prediction and ground truth boxes? No. So this is the largest box containing these two. The first one is trying to increase the intersection over union. So. This is not the correct setup here because these are two different objects. But if you assume they are the same object, the first component of your loss is trying to increase this intersection. The second component is trying to decrease these leftovers. So you put a large box around these and then you are trying to decrease these leftovers. Does that answer your question? Okay, perfect. Any other ones? So now I see what you're saying. This should be the smallest box that is containing these two. But yes, you're right. And the question is uh, another one. How do you represent a null set? This uh, no object, it's not a set. It's just a no object entry. And this could be when you're doing your classification, this could be the zeroth class. And then you kind of start counting the actual classes from one up until, I don't know, in Pascal VOC, you have 20. We count up until 20. Okay, perfect. Any other questions? So when it comes to the big picture, you first find the corresponding permutation to be able to match the predictions of your model with the ground truth. So you first find these sigmas. Once you found them, you're going to be able to write down your last function, a set last function. 
The rest of it is your architecture. And then you can apply it to a different task for segmentation as well. Any other questions about that?